And welcome to Strictly Biz News. I am Alfonso Santanello, your ringmaster for this episode. Um, I'm here... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta think of something. I don't know. Interesting title. Yeah. Um, I have Christina Chapel from the Alzheimer's Association here with me today. And I have first time guest Shell Horowitz um, from Grill Knock Running Goes Green. Shell, thank you so much for coming on. Pleasure. How about some? Um, so, today we're gonna go over a couple weird ranged topics. First one HSBC cuts jobs and then heads for a limited billion dollar profit. A, company, um, a retailer called Peach Mac, which is meant to go against the Apple stores. Google purchases a deal map, and Walmart starts offering video streaming t- on their website. So let's go right into the HSBC cutting jobs. There's a lot of layoffs going on with the big corporate companies lately. We've been talking about um, RIM cut off 2,000 people. Um, Cisco laid off a lot of people. Next, now it's HSBC, and if you don't know who they are, they're one of the biggest credit bureau companies in the country. Um, basically, mostly in Europe, um, they're slashing up to $3.5 billion um, in the overhaul that the new CEO is doing. His name is Stuart Gulliver. Um, and then he's selling its U.S. credit card arm to and other assets. And we see in the country to, they're just, the new CEO is just revamping, and he's just... Gulliver's Travels, all over again. <laughs> I don't know Gulliver's Travels. You don't know Gulliver's Travels? Oh. No. Okay, at least I'm not the only one who remembers it. <laughs> well, his aim is, he said the reason he's doing this, his aim is to focus on Asia and investors want to see progress on that plan. So... Part of me, I'm not keen on the job thing, but mm-hmm. part of me thinks he's smart because he's cutting areas which aren't producing. And yep. so why focus and spend money and, you know, put all energy into everything when you can focus on a couple good areas and make them greater and stronger? Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of their, they have forecast, there are 12 banks and brokerages pulled by routers are saying compared with $11.1 billion a year earlier. Um, that just made no sense. I'll repeat that one second. The first of, it's HSBC's, <laughs> one of the first of Britain's big banks to report and should show a pre-tax profit for next six months by then June of $10.9 billion. You so there, what? You need a ringmaster. Yes, I, okay. All right, let's go on to the next topic. I'm, I'm, <laughs> over, I'm over this. We're done with it. Yeah, I'm done. Moving on, it's the, really they're a cutting, Yeah, they're cutting jobs and they're making money off of it. Whatever, done. Uh, next up, there's a company called Peach Mac. The guy who actually started Peach Mac used to work for Apple. Basically, Peach Mac is a retailer of Apple products, so if you live in Western Mass, it's like Yes Computers. Um, Peach Mac is based in Atlanta, Georgia. What? I didn't know Yes Computers. Yeah, Northampton. Oh. Yep, they're an Apple retailer. Sorry. It's a great store. It's very nice inside. Um, So after this, the owner's name is Daryl Peck. He started, he worked for two decades at Apple. Uh, kind of wanted more of a simple life with his wife, so he quit Apple and decided to open the store, the retail store, in 2007. So um, they've been doing very well. Uh, he sells over 300 different accessories. Uh, 70% of the store is all computers. 70% of sales from the store is all computers. So he does very well with it. So why is it called Peach Mac? Peach being the Georgia, the Georgia, the Georgia peach, peach. Yeah. the Georgia icon. Just checking if you know that one. <laughs> and a, a fruit like apple, I guess, <laughs> also. Well, what's interesting to me about this is one of the things I teach in Guerrilla Marketing Goes Green and some of my other books is the abundance mentality. Mm-hmm. And reading about Daryl, he was worried about you know going head to head with Apple. They opened a store like right next to the store that yeah. he had just opened. But I'm of the belief that there's room enough for all of us yeah, to do what I we agree. do. And, that we, and in fact, we can often cooperate. And maybe he finds himself sending people to the Apple store for something he doesn't stock. And they may he has more accessories than they do, so they may reciprocate. And there are a lot of partnerships that can be doing. You can have ads together that say, come to Computer Central and you have you know anything you need for an Apple. Yeah. Uh, and, and build on that geographical proximity. And you can actually make the whole stronger than the sum of its parts. Exactly. I wish some businesses in which in mass would learn that. Um, um, hold on. I <laughs> oh, I guess you got something to say. I do Go have ahead. something to say. But off to your point, they said they sell about 1,500 different accessories, and yeah. that's what really makes them stand apart because yeah. Apple has about 300. So they're making three plus times that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bigger selection. And, you know, I have to give him credit. I, he looked at 
something that businesses don't often do. He did research on zip code tracking of where his customers were coming from, mm-hmm. and he actually opened up four more stores, so now they have five, because he realized customers were driving over 40, 40 miles. miles, you know, which a lot of businesses don't take that into yeah, account. Exactly. They just say, let's open, let's open, let's open, let's be big. Yeah. But he really did the research, so I give him credit there. And another thing I think is that Apple sets a very high bar. Apple, mm-hmm. if you go into an Apple store, and you're used to dealing with an ordinary computer store, the customer service experience is simply amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in competing in that market, he can't be a boiler room. You know, He's got to be at least as nice, at least as helpful, at least as knowledgeable not as more. the people they've got, if not more. Exactly. So I think that's good. I think yeah, that makes for a very healthy market. Yeah, I think, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this really expands or if, you know, I mean, yes, computer, I think... Around, even in Hartford, I don't know another Apple retailer. Oh, there's, um, there actually, there there's Left Click also in Northampton. Oh, they're a reseller of, uh, of a, Apple. And uh, there's computers? Or, yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's right. Dancer Computers in Amherst. Oh, wow. And so, I think there's... Sorry, guys. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> We're learning something new every day. See, this is why you got to watch business. You learn something. And listen, my sixth grade teacher said if we learn something new every day, we could go to sleep. So, time now to go to bed. Set, Christina, time, huh? time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. Uh, let me just reset that and then we to finish. Next up, Google purchases the deal map. Um, the deal map, everyone knows what Google is, so I'm not even explaining what Google is. But the deal map. <laughs> <laughs> they are gone. Um, the, deal, <laughs> the deal map launched in May 2010. It pretty much offers a lot of daily deals from a bunch of other sites. So it just pretty much pools everything into one site and Google bought them. That's you know that's something different where you know Groupon they did their own. There's Living Social. There's uh, locally actually now there's a five college deals site that's work they're getting worked on just started. I mean there's a lot of like daily Groupon coupon specials and this site pulls it all in. Yeah. So Google purchasing them was a really great idea. Um, they what well, they approached Groupon maybe about a year ago. Last year. Last year they, they got said, slapped. Yep, they said no. So they offer their they Google created Google offers, which really hasn't picked up too much. But maybe with the deal map, it's gonna they're gonna kind of sync them together. And because the the offers is supposed to enhance the Google payments, so yes. for mobile payments. So um, you know this is a really smart purchase for Google. It's in keeping with Google's self-proclaimed mission of first of all, it, it's when Taking you're aggregating. Over. A bunch of different sites together. That's perfectly in, in keeping with Google's approach of yeah. aggregating search. And they've got a lot of stuff in the past. They own YouTube. A lot of people don't mm-hmm. realize that they own hundreds of, of internet companies. Oh, yeah. And um, but it is. Uh, you were joking when you said they want to take over the world. But I'm not sure it's a joke. <laughs> I'm not sure. And if, if Google, if anybody's watching, you can buy me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, what, what Google does with intellectual property makes me, as a writer, kind of nervous yeah. sometimes. They, they have this attitude that just because a book physically exists, they should have the right to digitize it and make it available without checking with the owner of the copyright. And that, I think, is a very dangerous thing. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And yet, this is the company that has something resembling the Hippocratic Earth Oath of Do No Harm as their corporate motto. So there, there's a bunch of contradictions there. Go ahead. Well, mine's, mine's really not that important, but... Going back to Google, maybe taking over the earth, but I don't think they're God, and I think Ocho Cinco may have something to say about that because that's what he called Bill Belichick the other day. <laughs> yes, welcome to the Patriots. But that's for our sports show timeout premiering next month. Or Listen, I'm just happy the, the NFL lockout's over with. I know. Thank God. What would we do? Um, well, yeah. Well, okay. So the article pretty much didn't tell them how much. The acquisition details weren't closed, so you, we don't know how much they bought it for. But you know, I think this might have been a pretty heavy sum, and this is a really new. I mean, Google's bought companies that were you know, a few years old, three, four. This is, this is like last spring, like a year old. So this is definitely you know good for this company. So here's how to make your fortune: is to make something that Google wants to buy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me uh, conjure up another business. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, just buy me. I'll share some profits. Uh, <laughs> so you're not even selling her business. Christina's selling herself. Yeah. <laughs> Only on the business channel. Only on the business it's channel a, will yeah. I sell myself for out. Yeah, the QVC. We're going to end up having... <laughs> <laughs> when you see uh, a man hands to me, then I know I'm in trouble. Okay, <laughs> next topic. <laughs> Walmart. Walmart starts offering video streaming on their website. So we talked about this a, a few months ago, and... 
you know, we were like, okay, that they're going to do this, but they really pushed it um, to pretty much go over Netflix and Redbox. So it's they started it this week. Yep, this week. So by the time this goes, yeah. Um, so any movie that goes that they have in store on DVD, they'll automatically be put streaming on, the on their website. Same day as release. On the same day as release, which is pretty so, important. Yeah. So if you don't if you don't want to go to the store to buy the DVD, you know it comes out because Walmart has those great prices. You can also buy it streamed through their website. Um, the company that they bought to do this is called Voodoo.com, V-U-D-U.com. Um, they bought it about 18 months ago, and they offered 20,000 titles in just yes. that site. So now that Walmart has it, I mean, you can know anywhere from computers to PlayStation 3s, is said, to Blu-ray players. I mean, and they're the just... the prices are good. Yeah, they're really good. Uh, you can rent it from $1 to $6 or purchase from $5 off, so... That's... I don't know. I laughed because they're... Um head of the website said it continues with their whole website strategy of continual seamless shopping service mm -hmm. and I just don't I don't shop on Walmart's website to begin with so it wouldn't be a continual shopping but what are you watching the movie and shopping online at the same time to be continual yeah that's um I guess you're in the shopping and all of a sudden you're in the movie well, they, well, Walmart is back and forth and <laughs> another company that wants to own the world yeah so we've got they're trying they week. are trying uh, and it's interesting because we here in the valley have just had a situation where the broadest based collection of an independent video store that video store, Pleasant Street Video in Northampton, went out of business, yeah. but they used the community to buy most of the collection and give it to the local public library. Okay. So they are competing with Walmart on price. Free is better than even the dollar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it'll be interesting to see how, how Walmart meets that challenge in, in Northampton, where they do have a store. Yeah, exactly. Um, any last closing remarks on any of the topics we talked about today, guys? Well, I should mention, I, I, I should give some props to Walmart on some of the green things they've done. And getting yes. people to, to watch movies all over their own computer is certainly more green than driving to the store and, you know, picking up the plastic package. And, um, they're a company that I personally choose not to shop at, but I, I'm, they've done amazing things for bringing sustainability to a wider public, and I thank them for that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Walmart. I'm going to go check out Peach Mac when I go down to Georgia later on cool. this year. Well, maybe Next. you can bring the camera with you and do a chapel's corner in the corner of Peach Man. Maybe they'll sell you a fuzzy Absolutely. net with, with peach fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, we'll be right back with our interview with Ashley Bodai from businessbeware.biz. And welcome back to the Strictly One on One. I am here with Ashley Bodai of businessbeware.biz. Ashley, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So, for the people that don't know, what is businessbeware.biz? Well, it actually started out as a reverse Better Business Bureau kind of thing, where actually people could complain about you know problematic customers, kind of forewarn their fellow business people about them, like if they were going to do a job and say, so-and-so didn't pay, oh, do I want to do business with them? So it kind of started out as that. Um, and then actually we noticed how many people were like uh, about non-paying customers. So we're like, you know what, what can we do to amp this up? So we actually came up with the Beware Letter, which acts as like a collection letter. And it um, helps business owners whenever they send out this letter. It says, hey, there is a website I can complain about, you know, customers. I want to collect my money. I don't want to put you on the website, but there is a place. So that way when they collect the money, which 96% return rate, pretty good, they actually keep all the money. So instead of paying a collection agency 20 to 50%, they get to keep all the money. So it's kind of a, it's really a way to help business owners, you know, forewarn each other, but at the same time collect from non-paying customers or as we call custom monsters. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you come up with the idea? See what? How did you come up with the idea for the... the Actually, you know, my dad and I, after college, we started talking and, you know, it just kind of came about like he's been, he's been a business owner for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. And so he's dealt with every day. He's like, you know, there's nothing out there. There's something like for customers, it's Angie's List, uh, Better Business Bureau, all these group off report. And so nobody had anything for just, you know, the business owner, like as a business advocate. So he was like, let's do this. So it actually, a few years later, we did, we finally came up and said, you know what, let's do this. So. Uh, we just ran with it, and uh, we had such great feedback that we, uh, that, you know, <laughs> we kept evolving it. <laughs> so now that you guys also do a podcast now, correct? 
Yeah, actually, it, it started out as a podcast. It turned into a radio show last year, and then now we just launched on TV probably two months ago. So, so how, how, how did it evolve um, into going out to, into radio and then out to TV? <laughs> well, let, well we, we have so many crazy stories come in from, like, everything, and then, you know, people wanting to share their stories and say, hey, I've been there. I've done that. You know, these customers are the kind that you have to fire. So we thought, why not just you know, start, like, a podcast or a radio show. So we kind of went local with the radio show, and we had so much great feedback. People were like, oh, my gosh, I've been waiting to hear about these kinds of stories from everywhere because nobody talks about, you know, the, the stuff that the business owner has to deal with. It's always a bad a bad business, you know. Mm. And so we thought, let's bring the humor into it. So we created the radio show last year, and we had such great you know about it we kind of turned it into a web show and then we just kind of pitched it to a few people and they're like oh my gosh there's nothing else out there like this you know we're a father dollar team so there's not much out there like that either so it just it just really kind of developed into that and now we're kind of like that humorous side with the business you know where we uh everybody's got to have a little humor in their day as we said <laughs> so you know and you said you've missed, uh you've heard a lot of stories what is what's one of the funniest stories you've heard Oh my gosh, across the boards. It's because we deal with uh, from everybody from wedding planners to, you know, remodelers, contractors, uh, web designers, everything. Well, the one the other day I had an interview with the guy, the Sky Steward with uh, Jetticket. He told me about one he when he was a steward on a plane. This lady actually wanted to move seats, wanted to change seats, and he's like, man, you can't do that until the end, you know, after you, the flight takes off. And yeah. she didn't like that. Well, apparently, she stayed in her seat. Well, she told everybody on the whole plane that he had abused her, like physically abused her. Oh, wow. And so he didn't know, and he's getting, you know, the cart, and he says, I pushed the cart up the thing, and everybody's staring at me like I've done something. And he's like, can I get you something to drink? And everybody's like, you abusive person. And he's like, what is going on? So he confronts the lady, and he's like, she's sitting there lying about it. And then he said, you know, my customer service skills at 20 years old were not the best thing. So he's sitting there going, you're a liar. <laughs> So they got this whole mess of, oh, it's just, I mean, from that to a bridezilla the other day, like some wedding coordinator said that like something was wrong. It was a color she had picked. It was like pink, her pink. And then she said she wanted blue. So the, she actually started charging, running towards the wedding coordinator, ready to hit her. Like, oh I mean, God. like flat out hit her. Yeah. So it's across the boards. It's just some crazy stories from stuff. So. So the past couple yeah. of years, you guys have evolved. The where, what's your goal? Where do you guys want to see yourself in the next couple of years? Oh, we have so many things that we're planning on doing. It's insane. Um, we've actually kind of got a spinoff show that we're working on that may be something like um, like a thirty minute something between like you know candid camera with uh, you know punks, different things for businesses. <laughs> so uh, we're excited about that. But you know we're really just trying to kind of be that voice for business owners because we're small business owners. Besides running Business Beware, we actually run three business family businesses of our own. So I mean it's you know we we are in the shoes of everybody. You know so we know what the everyday life is so that way a lot of people can relate to it instead of us we're not just some guru saying oh this is what you can do we're actually the people living it every day so you know we just we want to keep doing and helping businesses all across coast to coast and um, that's our plan and you know keep going if people like it then we're going to keep doing it <laughs> <laughs> well actually yeah. thank you so much for uh joining me today the website is businessbeware.biz and again thank you so much and uh we'll be right back yes.